Colonialism and rule of the African continent may have ended years ago when African countries got independence, but did the colonial masters, primarily the British and French, truly leave the continent? As much as we would like the answer to be yes, the fact is far from it. Although African colonial masters may have physically departed the continent, the truth is they are still controlling things, particularly financially. It's no surprise that Julius Malama, leader of South Africa's economic freedom fighters, marched to the French embassy with a group of protesters and demanded that France leave Africa. The march began at Magnolia del Park in Brooklyn, east of Pretoria, and proceeded to the French embassy in South Africa. Buses, taxis, and private cars of EF ground forces, as well as hundreds of EFS supporters dressed in red t-shirts and red barrets, joined the protest as part of Africa Day commemorations. To live here, and by not living here, they will not live here. We are going to divide ourselves, others will go and occupy the main road there, and others will occupy the gate of France and Pasa. Malama stated in his introductory remarks, We, as a generation of freedom fighters, reject and condemn the fact that decades after the declaration of the so-called independence of formerly colonized territories, colonizers continue to maintain colonial and neo-colonial relationships with African countries, which are supposed to be free from colonial control. He further added that British, Portuguese, Belgian, Spanish, and French colonizers continued to brutally exploit, oppress, and micromanage all the countries they colonized many decades ago, and that French colonialism remains the most brutal, cruel, and devilish form of colonialism in Africa. Malema mentioned that when countries under French colonial authority achieved political independence, the French administration demolished and wrecked all systems and structures built with African resources and work power. They set fire to food, slaughtered cows, and demolished buildings and libraries. He also remarked that France continues to keep large and frightening military bases in practically all African countries they had colonial authority over, even after these nations' independence. Following his introductory remarks, the EF of leader proceeded to thoroughly read all of their demands to the French ambassador to South Africa, Aurélien Le Chevalier, who had been directed to receive the memorandum. Among the demands were 1. France must grant full independence to all African countries and allow them to determine their own currencies, monetary policies, and economic direction, because former French colonies such as Gabon, Mali, Niger, Senegal, Benin, Togo, Burkina Faso, Congo Brazzaville, Ivory Coast, Chad, Central African Republic, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, and Guinea Bissau continue to use French currency and monetary policies many years after independence. 2. France must abolish all colonial taxes because it is the African continent's wealth, as well as the blood and sweat of Africans, that constructed all of the infrastructure that African countries are now obliged to pay for decades after their so-called independence. 3. France must immediately withdraw all of its military bases in Africa. This includes, but is not limited to, military bases, French soldiers, French aid in the form of arms, and any French influence in African militaries or militia groups. 4. France must stop interfering in the economic problems of African countries through monetary policy, and the use of their currency in West Africa must gradually decline in favor of African-determined currency systems. 5. France shall release to African nations and its former colonies any mineral or fiscal reserves retained by the French treasury. 6. France must pay reparations to all of its former colonies, particularly Haiti, the architects of the world's biggest slave uprising. Haiti's progress has been stifled by a racist global world order that fears African independence and the establishment of the first black-led state. 7. 
The abolition of French as an official language in Africa in favor of a continental rebuilding of African identity that moves away from the imposition of white civilization standards and norms as a measure of humanity. Finally, France must stop sponsoring divides in Africa's continental multilateral organizations, particularly the Pan-African Parliament and the African Union. Malama then declared that Africa will not be free until African countries reclaim their reserve banks and have their own currency as independent countries. It is for this reason that African solidarity is critical in order for Africans to stand united against imperialism. In response to the demands made by Julius Malama, all the French ambassador had to say was that it is wrong for France to be blamed for all of the continent's problems. France today is a partner and friend of Africa. We stand for an independent Africa, and we want to strengthen our bond with Africa. His response doesn't really come as a surprise, because they wouldn't want to admit and agree to the demands listed in the memorandum, as it wouldn't be of any benefit to them. Looking past the French ambassador's reaction, Julius Malama's statement makes one clear point. Africa doesn't need France or any other Western power, but they need Africa. Take France for example, African countries under France continue to pay colonial taxes to France, and as Julius Malama has noted, France is what it is because of these colonial taxes. In fact, former French President Jacques Chirac stated that without Africa, France will slide down into the rank of a third world power. In another interview, the same president stated, We have to be honest and acknowledge that a big part of the money in our banks comes precisely from the exploitation of the African continent. This indicates how vital Africa is to France and why France is so determined to maintain a firm grip on these colonies at whatever cost. African presidents who refuse to pay these colonial taxes are assassinated or become victims of coups, but those who comply are supported and rewarded by France with luxury lifestyles while their people suffer great poverty and despair. It's such a terrible system that the European Union has condemned it, yet France is still unwilling to abandon the colonial system that sends roughly $500 billion from Africa to its coffers year after year. African leaders are frequently accused of corruption and serving the interests of Western nations rather than the people, but what if some of them act in this manner because they are terrified of being killed or victims of a coup? African governments may seek the support of a powerful nation in the event of hostility or conflict. However, unlike friendly nation protection, Western protection is frequently granted in exchange for these leaders refusing to serve their own people or nation's interests. So, when Julius Malama declared France should leave Africa, he certainly knew what he was talking about. Even if the French ambassador stated that it was wrong for France to be blamed for all the problems of the continent, which is true because Africa still has internal problems, the fact remains that Africa cannot be free to grow until the West completely removes all forms of control from Africa, allowing Africa to make its own decisions and solve its own problems without interference from them. What do you think? Do leave your comments down below in the comment box and don't forget to like, share, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell if you haven't done so already.